Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness of the Monty. I'm gonna be sticking it close to home this week to sort of sleep my bed the whole week, not drive really far. So I just cruised up uh, Highway 80 to fish the Truckee. The flow is really strong for mid-August, man. They're really letting water out of Tahoe. I, I believe that's the cause. I'm just gonna start straight up by hiking about a mile and a half up the river. There's a canyon and it's not really accessible here. So I'm just gonna hike all the way up until the trail gets closer to the river. This day can go either the hard way or the easy way. It's up to the river and the trout. So as I was saying, the river's moving, man. It's big. It's gonna be a good fall of fishing. My fishing cross current, it just gives me a couple extra seconds to get control of my jig because you got to have contact immediately because you'll be snagged in a second man the growth along the river has just come back with a vengeance <laughs> this is going to be a rough day of brush breaking probably the bears are gonna be out. These berries, they seem to love these berries. You see, when you go down by a Farad exit down there, there's usually piles of crap all over the place with those berries in it. I never wanna run into that bear when I'm breaking through brush down there. Man, the river is high. It looks like spring. Ah. <sighs> As long as I can get on this side of that and just follow the river, I should be okay. I really want to get over to that water on the far side, but that's a shot with this wind. I mean, I can cast far, but I can't get out there that far in these boots. It is straight up cold out here with the blasting wind. <laughs> I got a shirt. I didn't have my warm hat, so I got this shirt wrapped around my around my head and my hat, and then I'm using the sleeves as kind of like a scarf. And I look like something straight out of the Christmas Carol tales, probably. <laughs> I'd show you, but... I really don't want to stop fishing to take the camera off and stuff. I figured out the wind where if I cast slightly diagonal downstream, I get a little bit more distance. I just fired my jig right into the face of the bushes. So maybe I can get where I need to get to. Just had a really good fish on that far bank. I'm casting really hard and I'm getting it over in that fast water and I thought I was snagged and I hadn't gotten any hits yet and when that happens sometimes I get complacent and I just uh, I thought I was on a rock and I kind of pulled on it and then when he broke water I realized I'd blown it and by the time I realized that it was too late he was gone <laughs> <laughs> so the joke's on me. I got to get my head back into this game. I I let the wind and the cold and everything distract me. I, I, I got to focus here. Focus, Daniel son. He got downstream on me quick. I'm fishing that whole, I'm fishing that far bank. This fish already jumped once. I think it's a rainbow. It's a good fish, whatever it is. Good, get him out of that current, man. This wind, I've kind of harnessed it. And I figured out how to, uh, oh, I just went in the water, man. I got a boat full of water. I got a jumping fish, a boat full of water. Luckily, it's gonna warm up. That was a far bank catch hook that set though. Again, oh, he came off. 
He came off. I lost him. Oh, man. Crap. That was a nice rainbow. I saw him. He got on the other side of that rock. I just... I'm soaked. My leg is soaked, man. Oh! That hurt. That hurt. He got downstream on me so fast because I was... I'm casting straight across. There's a couple waterfalls coming in. I'll show you what I did. The choke there was I was trying to reposition. He got on that side of the rock. There's no current. And I, ha I, I wasn't reeling fast enough. You really have to keep pressure on these barbless jigs, man. And I just, I let the pressure go for just a, a split second. And he was able to shake that hook. And I'm just, I'm gunning this thing hard all the way to the far bank. And I'm hooking these fish right off that bank. And that's where that, I got two fish off the same bank. Oh man. I can't believe I choked like that. I can't believe I gave that fish slack. Like a lot of people will comment, they're like, why are you reeling when your drag is going? It's because you can't let any slack in the line. <laughs> the second there's slack, you get defeated. And I've already lost two nice fish today. Oh, this soaking wet leg and boot full of water blows, man. <laughs> that sun needs to come out and it needs to come out soon. <laughs> I think I gotta pull my boot off and shake the water out. I ventured that part of the morning where you start to wonder how many chances like that am I gonna get? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's hard enough to come out here and get one fish to bite. <laughs> You keep on squandering chances like that. You're likely, you're likely to end up with an empty net, which is where I'm at right now. I think it's time to head back to the car, warm up, maybe change my sock, and then uh, go to another stretch of the river, cause I've kind of played this area out that I wanted to fish and I've already lost two good fish up here. I just, it feels like I need to kind of throw the dice back in the cup, shake them up and start fresh somewhere else. So now that the sun's out, it's a little warmer. I think it's time to start getting ready to grind this one out. I took one on the far side of the river. I'm a little distracted. I'm listening to the Tim Conway Jr. podcast. <laughs> it's a show in Southern California, if you're not familiar. Ding dong with this trout. <laughs> that's, his, that's his saying, ding dong. It's not a very big one, but it's a beautiful rainbow. It's a beautiful rainbow. He's not huge, but it's a nice fish. It ain't gonna stop my day after losing those two nice fish earlier. I'll tell you that right now. Let's get him back in the water. Woo, this water's cold, man, for August. All right, I just stopped off and fished some of this before I got to my car. I'm gonna get my car and drive down river, man. I got a hole in my soul that needs to be filled. The only thing that's gonna fill it is a good fish. And good meaning a lot better than that little if you watch that rattlesnake clip, I'm real uneasy right now. <laughs> what? When you hear that sound, man, it's a bad sound, especially when you're walking around in stuff like this. And that snake was loud. He, he made himself known and then he retreated. But still. I like to fish, but now I'm just like uncomfortable. Now everything I'm walking over, I'm just like, I, I'm hearing rattles in my head now. <laughs> okay? There's rattles going on in my head that don't exist because I'm so freaking paranoid <laughs> that I'm gonna run into another rattlesnake. That's why usually I fish rivers like this when it's, you know, 30 to 
50 degrees and that's it. I think it's about time to call it a day. As I don't want to tromp through any more of these this tall stuff in the heat. <laughs> Just seems like a bad idea after I've been warned by the snake. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? Once I ran into that rattlesnake, man, I just wasn't comfortable going through the bushes. And it's irrational fear because the odds of seeing two of those things in one day, depending on where you are, is pretty slim. Where I used to fish east of Fresno, there were tons of rattlesnakes in the summer. And I'd fish the Kern in those areas in the summer. And I, I would, I have a box of rattles at home. I used to kill them when I would be in a situation where I'd climb into the canyon and in the one spot you could, there'd be a rattler on one of the ledges and I didn't want to take my chances climbing back out with that thing, so I'd just kill it. And I got a box of rattles from it, but I don't do that anymore. I usually will get a long stick and move them off the trail. I have another video where on the 4th of July I was fishing up by Hirschdale. That's where I saw the other rattlesnake on the truckie. And I just picked it up with my long handled net, moved him and threw him into the bushes because there were a lot of people that were going to be walking on that trail because it was 4th of July. But, you know, as I said, they can only strike two thirds of their body length and that's if they're coiled and ready. That snake, once I poked him, he, he was running away. He didn't, he didn't want anything. When you hear the snake, you're both on the same page. So I failed to get a big trout in the net today. And the, the, the excuse that I got for that is right here. It was all me. I just, the first one, I wasn't paying attention. I, it was cold. I thought I was snagged. And then when I felt it pull, I went to set the hook and it was too late. It already jumped and shook me. The second fish, I fell in the water and I was just trying to hold my rod and kind of pull it in and it was kind of slack right there and you'll see me when I'm fighting fish a lot I'm reeling with my drag going because with this ultralight five foot rod you got to keep maximum tension on it with this barbless jig because when they jump this lead head shakes and they just shake it and then as soon as there's no pressure the jig just falls out. Half the time when I get a fish in the net, it just, the jig falls out. The second I put the fish in the net and there's no pressure, the jig falls out. So I basically choked. I choked my way into one small trout and then getting scared away by a rattlesnake. I'm probably gonna fish the truckie again when it gets colder. <laughs> that snake, that's why I stopped fishing rivers in the summer a lot, and especially the lower rivers that are like at 3,000 feet. So I have a rattlesnake awareness uh, clip on my outdoor safety playlist if you think that'll help you and just give you ideas on how to be cautious and when you're breaking through brush, it's different than seeing one in your backyard, man. Thanks for joining me on Wilderness of the Monty. Until next time.